Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, we're testing out this Harbor Freight belt sander, and we're gonna find out if it's good for knife makers or not. So lately I've been giving a lot of thought to, you know, kind of the glide path that somebody who just wants to get into knife making has to go through to get to a point where they can be making pretty good knives. And one of the obstacles that they have to overcome, of course, is what kind of equipment to use. Now, you can start out using files like this right here, and you can just make an entire knife using a file. But it's a lot easier if you're using some kind of power equipment. So what we're testing here is a Harbor Freight uh, belt grinder, belt sander. It's a one by 30 belt sander, which means it's a one inch wide belt, 30 inches long. This is the absolute rock bottom in terms of price of any belt sander on the market. This is $54 is what I paid for this. So, um, is this adequate for a knife maker if you're just getting started? I can tell you for a fact, before we do any testing whatsoever, I've got thousands and thousands of dollars worth of professional belt grinding equipment out there. It's better than this. But that's not the question. The question is, is this suitable for somebody who's just trying to get their feet wet as a knife maker? All right, let's go test it out and find out. The model I'm reviewing here is the Central Machinery 1x30 belt sander. Central Machinery being the house brand of the budget tool chain Harbor Freight. Let's grab it, put it together, check out the features, and then put it through its paces. Now, before we do that, let's be real here. This is sold as a light duty sander. The kind of thing you'd use for woodworking or for grinding the occasional metal goody, little crafty type jobs, but it's not a heavy duty piece of machinery. It's not sold that way. As you can see, I can lift it with one hand. I paid 54 bucks for it. I think it's 59 on the website right now, putting it at quite a bit lower price point than a lot of tools. In fact, you know, pretty close to a lot of just normal hand tools. Now I gotta mention that I bought this with my own money. This wasn't a freebie. I'm not getting compensated. I'm not getting affiliate money or any of that. I don't know, maybe someday I will, but I'm not at this moment. Now I get folks contacting me all the time telling me that they love to make knives, but they're really strapped for cash. And the belt grinder is often the thing that holds them up. You turn on YouTube, you see guys like me using professional belt grinders, you look them up and they're thousands and thousands of dollars and everybody just doesn't have that kind of scratch. Everybody can't pull $3,000 out of the couch cushions. So the first place they look is this kind of belt grinder. So we're gonna find out whether it's worth looking at at all. Just a little terminology thing. This is sold as a sander. You know, what's the difference between a belt grinder and a belt sander? In essence, nothing. Something that is billed as a sander tends to be sold more to woodworking markets and craft markets, whereas things that are billed as grinders tend to be sold more to metalworking audience. But there's nothing intrinsically different about them. The machine comes with one belt, a work table, and a few bits of hardware to secure the work table to the machine. If I were the kind of guy who actually read the directions, I might have saved five minutes assembling this thing, but, you know, I needed my man card punched, so I just jumped right in. The table secures with a fairly flimsy little handle. You know, a nice heavy arm like this can be found from machinery suppliers for about the price of this whole rig. So, yeah, it's about what you'd expect. If you want to adjust the angle of the table, you can do so. I will say, I feel like if you adjusted this very often, you'd eventually strip some threads or tear up this handle and the whole thing would be broken. You know, that's the kind of machine we're dealing with. The sander has a small platen, flimsy, a cover over the belt, flimsy in plastic, a dust port, and a tracking knob that doubles as a detensioner for changing the belt. In order to change the belt, you have to take off the belt cover, yank on the not very yankable handle, and pull the belt off. Once you get the hang of it, pretty easy though.
The motor is rated at a quarter horsepower. First things first, the El Cheapo aluminum oxide belt has got to go. If you haven't used belt grinders before, buying lots of belts is just part of the program. So you're going to have to buy a bunch of belts to get started with this thing. You want to use the most aggressive belts possible. This is even more critical on a fairly small and anemic grinder like this. So I'm using 36 grit ceramic belts to rough out the knife. So let me just point out if you're not kind of coming from belt sander world, you are going to have to buy a fair number of belts. The more you do, obviously, the more belts you're going to be buying. Typically, aluminum oxide 1x30 belts are going to be kind of in the $1 to $2 range, whereas the good quality ceramics maybe going to be in the $3 to $4 to $5 range. I'd recommend getting some 40 grits or 36 grits or something in that range, maybe some 60s, maybe some 120s. And then once you get above 120, ceramics only go up to 120 grit typically so you'll have to get some other belts if you want to go anything beyond that hey guys let me just jump in and say that if you've been following my channel all these years and want to help out the channel uh there is a way to do it it's called patreon so click the link in the cards and description and it will take you to patreon where you can help out the channel you get plans if you uh if you help us out to all kinds of knives and gizmos all right, so let's get back to it. Now, the heavy grit belt didn't play nice with the work table, so I had to do some swearing, I mean, some adjustment, and eventually I got the table all sorted out. Got enough clearance so that the belt would pass in front of it without just grinding a hole in the work table. All right, let's make a knife. In this case, a great beginner project. We're gonna make a hunting knife from a rusty old file. Compared to my Bader and Ameribrade 2x72 professional grinders, this is painfully slow. At even moderate pressure, the motor stalls and the whole thing bogs down. But I kept going, and what I found out after I let go of my annoying prejudice for pro gear was that you pretty quickly got a feel for exactly how much pressure was required to keep the motor rolling and everything was fine. The trick was to settle into a slow rhythm, keeping the workpiece moving, and not trying to hog off too much material in one spot. My guess is that it took me about three times as long to accomplish this as it would have on a big grinder. But actually, that's not too bad. The motor never overheated, nothing came loose, fell off the machine. After a while, I had a knife looking thing in my hands. Gotta say, felt kind of satisfying. So now we've profiled the whole thing, gotten rid of all the excess material. Without changing belts, and that's actually kind of important, I moved to grinding the bevels. Again, it took a lot longer than it would if I were using a larger, more powerful machine. And again, we knew that. I will say the quality of the grinds was actually just fine. I was concerned that I'd start getting chatter and the sort of flimsiness of the platen would cause problems. It didn't. I really didn't have any trouble maintaining a steady, clean grind. So after maybe half an hour, I had my knife ground. I switched belts at that point, which isn't that time consuming once you get used to it. Again, more of a pain than with a pro belt grinder, but really not that bad. And at that point, I finished up the bevel grinds with a 120 grit ceramic belt. Once again, I had no particular trouble maintaining clean grinds. There weren't any problems with chatter or things jittering around. The machine operates kind of slowly and with such low power that you never felt anything was about to go out of control. Nothing got shaky or vibrated in some unreasonable way. The bearing on the idler wheel at the top of the platen was pretty warm after an hour or so of use. It's not going to last 30 years under heavy use, I can tell you that, but, you know, so be it. Just to be thorough, I also tested the sander on some other materials, various plastics, wood, some non-ferrous metals. Nothing remarkable here. Anything that'll handle grinding an entire knife should be fine with softer materials. So one thing that surprised me was that I was able to grind the entire knife with one of these tiny little 1x30 belts. 
I guess that tells you a lot about how good modern abrasives are, but still a nice surprise. And by the way, I think I could probably make at least one more knife before this belt's completely shot. It'd be a little slower than the first one, but, you know, honestly, I think it'd be fine. So, who's this machine for? Look, if you're not a knife maker, maybe you do woodworking or a little light metal fab work, some sort of craft type stuff, and you want something cheap and light duty to stick over in the corner for those occasional sanding or grinding jobs, this is actually a great way to do it without putting a dent in your pocket. If you're a knife maker though, this is for the person who just can't afford much gear or who wants to dip a toe into the water of knife making to see if it's a hobby that they might want to pursue. Would any sort of professional or even a reasonably serious hobbyist find a place for this machine in their shop? Eh, not really. But look, it's under 60 bucks. I made the whole knife on here. So could you. Okay, well, the verdict is in. This is about what we expected. It's not a very good belt sander, but you know, it does work. And if you're trying to get over the hump from starting with a file to using some sort of power equipment, this might be a good solution for you. If you're just starting with the hobby and you wanna find out whether you know, this is even something that you're interested in doing over the long term. There's no point in just running out and buying all kinds of expensive gear, you know, pro belt grinders and all that sort of thing, if you don't even know if this is going to be fun for you. So if you're going to do something for your scout troop or you're going to do something, you're just barely getting started, maybe, uh, maybe you're in college or, you know, you've just gotten your first job or, you know, you're still living at home with your parents or, you know, whatever it might be, this might be a good starting point for you. But just bear, bear in mind, you know, it has very, very significant limitations. Good starting point? Sure, why not? Now, you can spend a little bit more money and get some more capable grinders than this, and in upcoming weeks, I'm gonna be doing, you know, showing some more of those. But as a place to start, I mean, for $54, hey, not bad. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com